All right, hey guys, Riley here from becominganelectrician.com. In this video, I wanna to talk to you about how to splice your wires as an electrician, okay? Now, before you watch this video, I highly recommend you watch the two other videos. The one video is about how to strip your insulation jacket. That is the outer white sheathing, okay? And then in the second video, I talked to you about how to strip the uh, conductor insulation. Okay, a lot of people are very, very aggressive when it comes to this and many times they score the wire. Copper is very brittle. We wanna make sure that we are protecting the integrity of the wire. Now in this video, I wanna to talk to you about how to splice your wires, right? I wanna talk about how to make it easy on you. Uh, and some things for you to understand is when you're first getting started, it's gonna be very hard on your thumb, okay? Because a lot of times, you know, like you are uh, holding down and you have to strengthen your hand to be able to strip the wires. But I wanna talk about, in order to make things easier, many times stripping the wire a little bit longer is gonna make your life easier. One other thing I wanna talk about is these wire nuts, okay? Many times people think that one wire nut fits all and it's not the case, okay? Uh, I'll just show you on the back here. So many times these brands, they come out with a chart like this. I highly suggest you read these. You can pause the video and you can look at it for yourself. Now, this brand is saying that this supports three number 10s and I don't know about that. I understand that they're saying it does, but in my experience, you, essentially, whenever you start working with number 10 wire, you kind of wonder like the red moret. Uh, the yellow moret was very similar to like the blue moret. Uh, but you know, so essentially it's like, you know, maybe four or five number 14s under this thing like max. And one other thing I'll say about morets, or sorry, these are called like wire nuts, but morets is usually what they call them on the job site. It's kind of like a Kleenex, right? That's just like the brand name, but really it's like a tissue. This is a wire nut, but moret is usually what they call them. Uh, and these are like kind of like my favorite ones. I like how it has the wings. But in other words, it's kind of one of those things that, you know, if you're trying to put the wire underneath the moret and it's not fitting, you're gonna to need to go to the size up. So I just wanna say that one size does not fit all, even though they are saying one size fits all. All right, so let's get into actually how to splice the wires because all this knowledge pertains to get a good end product. Now, before we get into the video, definitely check out my free book I have for apprentice electricians. Just go to becominganelectrician.com forward slash subscribe and you can download my free electrical book for apprentices absolutely for free. All right, so a quick recap, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I am just gonna cut off this wire here. And I just wanna show you how to strip the jacket quickly. I'll show you how to strip the wire and then I'll show you how to splice it so that everyone can be on the same page, all right? So I also just released a video about my favorite knife as an electrician. It's this 18 millimeter Milwaukee snap knife. You have to be very careful, they're very, very sharp. And so like I was saying, what I usually like to do is I put like my, my, my two fingers underneath, I have my thumb up here. And what you do is you gently score the wire, like super, super gently, okay? And so what this is gonna do is because this X-Acto knife is so sharp, it is, this is allowing you to pull the wire up, okay? Because it's all about the integrity of the wire. Now, at the very, very end, what you wanna do is you can put your knife in and yes, you can score or you can actually cut through because down here, the wire is gonna get cut anyways and it's not a big deal, okay? So because I've scored the wire, you can see how easy it is to pull up. But because I was super, super gentle, I know that this wire, so from down here, this is bad, right? Like where, where my thumb is, like this is gonna get cut off. Up here, this wire is good. And then again, I just take the knife and just gently, all right, so that is our cut. All right, so the next thing is when it comes to stripping our wires, okay? So the first thing I wanna tell you guys is especially when you're first getting started as an electrician, you need to build hand strength, all right? It comes over time. And the hardest thing is when you start having to splice mul like multiple wires. Like, so three wires isn't too bad. And, and this is number 14, okay? Once you start getting into number 12, which is typically your, your standard commercial wire, right? In a commercial setting, all your plugs, all your lights, everything's number 12. And so it's a lot harder on your thumbs and on your fingers. And um, when it comes to tucking your wires in the box, all of that stuff comes into more play because the wire's bigger, it's a little harder to work with. Number 14, it is so flexible, okay? It's so easy. Like if you always work with number 12 and then you come and work on 14, like it's just much easier on your, on, your, on your body, on your hands. But your hand strength is very important to build up over time. But in order to help you when you're first getting started, what I wanna say is you can strip your wire a little bit longer, okay? If you strip it a little bit longer, it's way easier to splice. So when we look on our strippers, we have solid, we have stranded, okay? So solid is 
a solid single conductor like this, right? This is number 14. You have to make sure you put it in the 14. If you are putting it in the uh, 16 or the 18, you're gonna score the wire, which I'll show you in just a second. Again, there's also a stranded here as well. So you can see the stranded is actually one up. So if 14 is here, you can see that we go down to 12 for solid. It is actually the 14 for the stranded. So watch this. So I have this stripped and it was a good clean strip. And if I go to bend this, you're gonna see it's about eight or nine bends for this to break. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so about eight bends, which is, you know, like, the, because copper is, it's a metal and it's soft and it will break. And when it's in your box, you wanna make sure that the copper is, it's all about protecting the integrity of the wire, right? Because again, this is electricity, there could be house fires, all that kind of stuff, okay? Now, I quickly wanna show you that if we strip this wire, okay? And so what happens is some people, when they strip the wire, they're really, really rough on it. They go, you know, they, they move their stripper all over the place, and I've seen it all the time, and I always try to um, talk to apprentices, and I try to explain to them, I'm just like, okay, when you score the wire, like this, okay, and let me just show you a little bit better. When you score the wire and you have this, what happens is the wire becomes very brittle because it's a metal, okay, it's copper. And I just wanna show you, so I showed you when I bent, it was about eight. And if we're gonna bend it like this, so again, we, we can see that it's scored. And so watch this, how many bends do you think? So one, two, two, two bends compared to eight. And so that's the first thing I really want to get across to you. Again, you can go and check out the other video I have talking about how to strip your single conductors, okay? All right, so when it comes to st uh, stripping your wire, uh, what I've found the biggest trick is you wanna have your ends line up down here, okay? So watch this. So, so if we have our wires like this, so typically what I like to do is I like to have one kind of cross over, just like you see like this, okay? All the ends are lined up down here. And when we take our pliers, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm not grabbing up here at the top, okay? Because if you grab at the top, it's not gonna work very good. Typically, you come down here to the bottom and you're just kind of, I'm going gently, okay? And I'm just kind of, see how, see how I'm kind of clamping it down like this? With, you know, I'm kind of doing this as I'm going. And I'm just kind of molding that wire because what you wanna do is you wanna get a nice braid going on. That's the goal here. We're getting a nice splice, a nice braid. Okay, and I'm now I'm just kind of working it out. And then once, this, once the braid's kind of done, then you go a little bit harder. Okay, so like one, two, and you, you can come up here at the top now. And now it's like the braid, okay? And so like that's, that's a pretty nice splice, okay? Now, when it comes to putting on your morette, here's a cool trick I learned from somebody. You gotta be really, really careful, okay? Because you can see that your, your pliers have a hole in here. And if you cut the length of that, so for example, you can see that if I come here and if I cut this, you can see that it has the hole and the blades. But if you do this the wrong way, what's gonna happen is you are gonna actually cut off your wires right there. It's happened to me. Sometimes you're talking to somebody and, and you think you think the pliers were this way, but they're actually this way, and you end up cutting off your whole splice. And especially if the wires are already short, you're like, oh no. So this is a cool little trick. You can cut it right here. I'll just cut that just to the side here. And so that essentially is like the perfect, and, and even after I cut, maybe you might just kind of tighten this a little bit. And then this is like the perfect size for that barrette. You put it on and it's like, boom, okay? And then again, if this was a pigtail or whatever, uh, there, you, there you go. You know, you got like your two pigtails there. I'll do one other splice for you guys here quickly before I wrap up the video with four wires, okay? All right, just like I showed you in the last video, you can strip your wires. Uh, so I'm gonna put it in the 14 and in the 12. And again, I'm, I'm gonna strip them a little bit longer. And uh, a cool little trick. So imagine you are working in uh, a finishing area and you have to come in and do like one plug or one switch or something. And you wanna, you wanna make sure that you're not leaving like your, your, your stripping ends because if you leave these around, it's just not good practice. Like in the roughen stage, yeah, you know, all this stuff, it goes on the ground and essentially, you know, it, it eventually gets cleaned up. But if you go into a finishing stage, like someone's home or there's carpet and stuff, you don't wanna leave the insulation ends. So what I found is if you strip, you can put your, your finger at the very end of it and you can catch it. Look, look at that. And then you would just throw it in the garbage rather than it go all, all over. And then same even if you cut. So if you're gonna cut the copper, because 
remember, copper is a metal. And if a little piece of copper goes on the countertop, someone can go and, you know, they might put their tools or, 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 or they might put something on the counter. And if it rubs on the, on the copper, it's going to scratch the countertop. And they're going to look at you as the electrician. So when you cut this, again, same thing. It's sticking out just a little bit. If you put your finger here and cut, watch this. You, keep, you catch it. And then you make sure to throw that out. Okay, so again, it's all about just kind of knowing these little tricks. So we have our wires, and, and again, when these are in a box, it's a lot easier. So the first thing I'm gonna do is you just try to bunch them all. And again, it's kind of best practice to not touch the copper, right? Because you always have to treat things as if they are live. That's usually what we're always taught on the job site, right? Like treat things as if they're live. So when it's like this, what I would do is if I'm holding them, I'm using my clines just gently to push that insulation and the whole goal is to try to uh, put, just kind of line them all up, okay? And so once they're all pretty lined up and as, as you can see, when they're longer, look how easy it is and that's already pretty clean, okay? So again, I haven't uh, been an electrician for the past year or two so I can even feel that my strength in my hand isn't as strong. But again, what I'm doing is I've lined up the ends and I'm just kind of molding them. And again, check out my hand. I'm doing this, you see over here, kind of like that. I'm kind of just gently molding them. And what we're trying to do is we're just trying to get a braid, okay? Sorry if the camera's not picking it up the best. But we're just trying to get a nice braid going on. And again, I'm just taking my time for the video here. But uh, you can see that it's a pretty nice braid all around so far, right? The ends are lined up. So what I would do is once, that's, once I'm happy with it, um, so again, because the wire can be in the box, many times what I do is it's folded, okay? And so when it's folded, when I'm twisting this way, um, it's, it's gonna be like hitting like my hand, okay? So in other words, it's actually gonna twist. If the wire is straight and you twist it, it's just gonna keep twisting on you and it's annoying. So if you bend it just a little bit, again, you don't wanna always be bending the wire because it is copper but gentler bends like that isn't a big deal. It's kind of like the harsh kinks. So because we have it bent, when I go to actually twist the wires, you can see I get a nice tight splice. Like that looks pretty good, doesn't it, right? And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, again, you can, you can do it this way, like I'm showing, to cut it. But many times, you know, you can just eyeball it. You'd be like, yeah, it's about there. But this is a pretty cool little trick someone showed me, you know? So this right here, is essentially the length of you know the wires that you can cut. You can maybe go a little bit longer so you can see the copper is exposed a little bit and you cut. But again, I'm warning you, always make sure that you are cutting the right way because if you cut the wrong way, you're cutting off your splice. One time I've done it and the wires were already short and it was like, no, but there you go. So that's a nice clean splice. And I showed you, you wanna strip the wire a little bit longer. You kind of um, butt up the ends, make sure they're all good and when it comes to this, so you can see the number 14, it is going on. You can see that this wire here is not that covered. So you can go a little bit more. And I wanna also share that you can't see, look, look, you can see how it's going white. I want it, so that's good that it did that. So if you tighten these down too much, it is gonna do this on you. And again, it's all about making sure that everything's safe. So, but anyway, so in this case, I would say that this is still acceptable, even with that. Um, but there you go, okay? So let's take it off, let's look at the splice. So that was with four wires. In this case, the wire actually is a little bit long and that's because when I cut it, I did go a little heavy. So if I do this, okay? And then again, when you cut it, usually you wanna kind of uh, shave off those ends a little bit because if I share that with you, you can see that these are very sharp and they're not gonna twist too good into the wire nut, okay? Because how the wire nut works is there's, a, there's the metal in there, right? And so that just helps the, um, the connection better, right? So for example, if there was ever a loose splice in here, because this is metal, it's still gonna help the connection even if this splice doesn't work. Um, some people, you know, they just put the two wires in and they just twist it together. I always splice it, always, 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 unless you're testing. Testing's a little bit different. But so you have it, I would maybe round, I would round it out just a little bit. And so what that's gonna do is, you, um, sorry, and then what that's gonna do is you don't have those super, super sharp edges anymore. You know, maybe I could've went a little bit more, um, but let's just use another one because 
you know, since this is YouTube and a video and people are particular and I want to show kind of best practices. So you can see that, you know, because I tightened it too much, this does start to um, stretch, right? And uh, it compromises the integrity, I guess, of this thing technically. So I'll put that to the side. And so this is a brand new one. You can see it's nice and clean. And let's just see here, okay? So that one fits a lot better and that's good. All right, so a nice clean splice. So if you guys have any questions, you feel free to leave uh, comments below. Um, but there you guys go. That's how you splice wires as, as an electrician. And uh, don't forget about my free book if you wanna stay updated with the website. Just come to becominganelectrician.com forward slash subscribe. Sign up with your name and email and I will email you my free book absolutely for free. Again, leave comments below if you have questions or would like to see a video on different topics. I have a bunch of different kind of equipment now that I want to show uh, as we go along here. Uh, I hope you are enjoying and make sure to subscribe here on YouTube if you would like to be updated on new videos. Thanks so much for checking out the video. I hope this is a good guideline video to show you how to splice. Make sure that you are protecting that copper. That's the biggest thing I want to share with you guys. The next thing is again, you have to have that hand strength and you're gonna get that over time, but make your life easier and just strip the wire a little bit longer, okay? All right, thanks for checking out the video. Talk to you in the next one.